Well, hello there, Twit Army. I'm Father Robert Ballas here, the digital Jesuit, straight back from the Twit coverage of Mobile World Congress in Barcelona. I'm tired, but I couldn't go to bed until I showed you some of the hotness that's been hanging around the lab for a while. The nice folks at the Raspberry Pi Foundation sent us this. It's the Raspi 3 Model B. Now, for the folks who maybe haven't heard about the Raspberry Pi, first, I don't know where you've been hiding, but it is the original, the, the, the real concept maker for low-cost computing, especially low-cost computing that led to development. We started with the Raspberry Pi 1, went over to the Raspberry Pi 2, and now we've got the third version. Now, on the surface, the Raspberry Pi 3 doesn't look a whole lot different from the Raspberry Pi 2. In fact, the setup is identical as far as layout is concerned. If you created any 3D printed enclosures for the Raspberry Pi 2, it will still work. The holes are in the same place, and as you can see, so are the ports, the four USB and the one Ethernet port. Not only that, but the 40-pin GPIO header is the same, so if you've got any wiring harnesses that you created for projects on the 2, they will work just fine on the 3. Now, if we look on this side, you'll see again that HDMI and the audio port and the power port are all the same. So you might be asking yourself, what, what did they change? Well, the answer is a lot. They've moved from a 32-bit ARM Cortex-A7, which is what you found on the Raspberry Pi 2, to a 64-bit quad-core ARM Cortex-A53. Now, uh, what do all those numbers mean? Well, speed. Lots and lots of speed. This is a 1.2 gigahertz 64-bit quad-core ARM Cortex-A53. It benches at about five times faster than the processor that was on the Raspberry Pi 2, which, of course, it means that if you've created a project with the Raspberry Pi 1, say a, a main machine, an arcade emulator, this is the time to upgrade. You will get so much more performance out of the Raspberry Pi 3, and it's just nicer. Now, it's not just processors. The system on chip, the Broadcom, has changed to support different peripherals. Rather than having to use a USB dongle to get myself Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, it's now on board. In fact, if you look right here, you'll see this is one of the few changes in the board where the LEDs for power and activity used to be, there is now a on-chip antenna that gives me Bluetooth, Bluetooth LE, and 802.11n Wi-Fi connectivity. This all gives me more inside a single package. And since this is going to be selling for the same price point that we had the Raspberry Pi 1 and Raspberry Pi 2, namely $35, a bit more at the beginning, because of course everyone's going to take advantage of the, the uh, supply shortage, I can develop a more integrated product that doesn't require me to have a lot of USB dongles off the bat. So when I de design the next version of my uh, my little Raspberry Pi here that's portable, I can have, um, well, nothing connected here, and I can actually use the Wi-Fi for video connectivity because I've got a driver for that. Now, this does come at a cost of power. Specifically, it uses... 5 volts, 2.5 amps. So it is a bit more than the Raspberry Pi 2, but again, most of that goes to the uh, the wireless connectivity and the fact that the, the processor is running at 1.2 gigahertz. You're, you're going to pay a little bit for the speed somewhere. But other than that, I, I think this is an easy transition. If you've got any projects that are using the Raspberry 1 or the Raspberry 2, Pi 2 right now, switch it over to the 3. That's, that's a no-brainer. Secondly, as we go forward, the extra speed, remember, 10 times faster than the original Raspberry Pi, this is going to be, well, an eye-opener, an option-opener. And more than that, I think it's going to be a favorite among developers. Look for the Raspberry Pi 3 in Twit coverage all this week and next week. In fact, we are coming up to March uh, 14th, which is 3.14. So we're doing a Pi Day episode of Know How. Again, look for us and uh, on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash knowhow. Until then, I'm Father Robert Ballas here, the digital Jesuit, saying happy Pi dreams.